Florida has a bit of a serial police impersonator problem. But exactly how serious is it? Stick around and find out. This video is about Jeremy DeWitt, a man who has gotten into a lot of trouble recently for impersonating a police officer in the state of Florida. Now, he says he's innocent because he was only operating as an employee of Metro State Services, an elite motorcade protection detail for funeral processions. That particular company provides personnel for VIP and executive protection, claiming that they offer the highest level of protection for anything from gang members to celebrities. Hold on a second. That's the wrong there. And that's also the wrong there. And why isn't there anything after that comma? Why isn't that period a comma? Why isn't that period a comma? Who's making the decision on what is or isn't capitalized? Why isn't we capitalized? Two basics what? Wide and range should not be connected by a hyphen. Now, folks, pro tip, if a company doesn't know how to spell, it should raise questions about what else they don't know how to do. But let's move on. I'm sure that's not a reflection on the incompetence of some of their employees. Metro State is a civilian security company specializing in protecting funeral processions within the state of Florida. And there is a Florida statute, 316.1974, that gives them some pretty neat exception to certain traffic laws while doing so. They get the right of way, regardless of any traffic control devices at intersections, crosswalks, etc. Once an intersection has been entered, all other vehicles have to yield the right of way to them until the funeral procession has passed. To qualify for these exceptions, they must utilize purple and amber lights, which the Metro State vehicles are equipped with. They must yield the right of way to a police officer or emergency vehicle when directed to do so. They must follow or be followed by vehicles within the procession as closely as is practical and safe. And they must exercise due care when participating in a funeral procession. What exceptions to traffic laws does this statute not allow? Well, it doesn't allow you to disobey speed limits, cross double yellow lines, slap motor vehicles, drive recklessly, utilize sirens, block intersections well in advance of the procession, or order people to pull over to the side of the road. That last one is especially important because everything from the vehicles to the badges to the uniforms to the duty belt and equipment to the description of their dispatch center, which is apparently DeWitt's personal cell phone, is designed to give the appearance that the employees of Metro State are police officers. Now, why did that come back to bite DeWitt? Well, that's because if someone is taking any action under color of law against persons or property, meaning they're utilizing the appearance of legal authority when they don't actually have it, they're committing a felony of the third degree within the state of Florida. If someone dressed like that, driving that or that, ordered you to pull over, well, you'd probably think they were a police officer, right? By the way, this video, in which DeWitt recorded a phone call between himself and a woman who was complaining about his unlawful activity, was also a felony, violating Florida's statute on the unlawful intercept of wire communications. This is also the video in which he mentions a dispatch center, which makes me wonder exactly how many people are dying that you need a dispatch center for funeral escorts. Speaking of felonies, DeWitt actually has quite a record to include giving a false or fictitious name to law enforcement, which is a felony, unauthorized possession of a fake identification card, another felony, lewd or lascivious battery in the second degree, meaning he molested a victim between the ages of 12 and 16, while he himself was over the age of 18, which is a felony. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, which is another felony, and failing to register an address or internet identifier as a sexual offender, which is a felony. This isn't even taking into account the many times he's been charged with impersonating a police officer. There was once in 1998, twice in 2001, not including the incident in 2001 where he was charged with unlawful use of a flashing or rotating blue light and possession of radio equipment assigned to law enforcement frequencies, and then of course the three charges that are the focus of recent scrutiny which occurred last year. Another issue that should probably be addressed is that the company DeWitt was working for is advertised as a security company, but DeWitt doesn't have a security license, something that would be required for him to do the job. It's not like he could really claim he wasn't acting in a security capacity, considering the company's description of itself and the gear he wore to include handcuffs, OC spray, a baton, a ballistic vest, and my personal favorite, an airsoft pistol. He's a felon. He can't own a real firearm, so he has to pretend to instead. 
so much for providing the highest level of protection, because correct me if I'm wrong, real guns are a little bit better for that sort of thing. In my professional opinion as former law enforcement, this guy is boned. And I hope this helps you all understand exactly how much trouble he's in. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section. For more content like this, hit that subscribe button and check out a few of my other videos. Until the next time, be good, stay safe. This is a police escort. This is a police escort. This is a police escort.